is good. And we are live, and we are live. It's Mazzy here. Now, I'm going to do a little introduction first, and I'll introduce uh, the guests here. There will be one more person probably coming up in a few minutes, not uh, at the top of the hour here. But this is a response and a discussion and a debate uh, from my video introducing, for me, the Humming Guru cleaning machine, the, the ultrasonic cleaning machine that over 5,000 of you watched in 24 hours. So thank you for that. But it wasn't a very extremely technical video. I'm one you know who don't uh, like to clean records and get into that. And everyone's been brow beating me for years about cleaning records. And I cleaned the records. We cleaned about eight records uh, during that session. I only showed a couple and I definitely heard a difference. So Am I a convert? Am I going to clean new records? Probably not unless I hear an issue, but I will clean a lot of my older records on that. Now, the reason for this video is based on that, there was a series of emails and a comment by Michael Fremer, who you all know. If you don't, uh, he's an expert in final records, music, speakers, ten table setups, and he posted and sent me that I should not have shown what I call what tur it's it's Turgiclean is this particular brand, which is a mix of Turgital with some other um I don't know super scents, kind of like gin from to vodka. And if you know gin is made from vodka and it's infused with botanicals. So this is what this is. Now according to Michael Fremer and he's followed this and I think Michael should be joining us in a bit that he says you should not use this. This is, he didn't use the word toxic, but it's not a good thing to use on your records. And uh, you need to wash your, rinse your records after. So we're gonna talk about that um, a little bit. Um, I am new to this, so I'm not, you know, either way, leaning either way, whether to use this or you used distilled water only. I'm still here to learn like a lot of you in the peanut gallery and uh, people who are watching this video. So I got two people here. Uh, and we might have Michael Fremer up in a little bit, who started this whole thing, this debate, uh, who have different slightly takes on it. We have Mike Esposito from the InGroove, the great record store in Phoenix. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to put links to both these, their channels. They got great channels. And he has this one opinion on it. And then I have uh, the vinyl archivist, Patrick, in California. And he does it a different way. Now, I will say, and it's maybe me in a little defense, there seems to be a different take on this over the last few years of using a surfactant. How do you pronounce that? Surfactant. Surfactant uh, in the distilled water. The Library of Congress, the Canadian, all these different uh, entities who do official archiving around the world and the universities, like the University of Texas that my friend, the archivist, went to four years ago, got a degree up until at least four years ago. And a few years, I looked online, even up to 220, 2020, people were saying use things like a Turgital mix, but a very little on there. Some people now are saying some chemists and scientists and other things are saying otherwise. So that's where the debate comes in. So that's how I want to start this. That's how this whole thing came out. So again, um, let's start with Michael Esposito because he is one that tends to agree with Michael Fremer uh, from the way of using no additives. Well, I mean, we just got different chemists that are saying, you know, don't use it. And we've got other chemists that are saying, use it. My point is with this whole debate and being on one side or the other is it's not necessary. And if it's not necessary to buy and apply chemicals and it's not necessary for the cleaning of the record, why would you buy it, use it, and then have to re-clean your records once again after you clean with that cycle. So it's just one of those things if, you know, maybe it's not settled science, maybe it's not something that's been proven one way or the other. So I'm not really willing to risk my records or somebody else's records on a possibility. I'd rather not be, uh, you know, the guy, the doctor from the 40s, who's the proponent of smoking cigarettes, I, I'd rather just wait a little bit longer and let's see where the dust settles, especially because it's not necessary. It's not something that needs to be used. Patrick? Oh, well, I mean, Your response. I, uh, <laughs> I don't really, it's, 
it's kind of like I've I've gone I've gone all different ways. I like I said I've done I did steam cleaning, I did wood glue. Um, the steam cleaning was great. You could watch the record warp as you like did that power steam run. That thing the record would literally warp in front of your face. Um, I used ultrasonics for the last ten years, and then and then when the Kermis thing came out. Um, what one thing I got from that was when he did that demonstration, you know, it caused that firestorm, you know, one thing that I, I took away from that was the mechanical process of cleaning the record. And I literally stopped using ultrasonic and I remembered that my timeline so that I had time to think about this. I stopped using my ultrasonic and was just using a, and my, my video on my, on my channel. I'm not trying to hit my channel, but my, my, my cleaning video is all about, I don't even use the ultrasonic. I, I I'm doing just a manual cleaning with a, with a record vacuum, the VPI 16.5. And that's what I went with because it, with the, with the right chemicals, it was working beautifully. And, you know, so, so only when I got the humming guru and I have three other ultrasonics in my garage, only when I got the humming guru, was I able to just, you know, it, it was, as good or better as doing the mechanical process for some reason, the way the transducers are. However, it was better than the one ultrasonics I had in the garage. And it was just so much easier to do it with that without having to do the scrubbing and the, and the, and the, and the five vacuums and the vacuum so loud. So, so, I mean, I would, I, I would advocate that if you don't want to get an ultrasonic, use the manual process and use the right chemicals and make sure you get a vacuum and rinse that shit off and rinse, you know, rinsing is, is, is the main thing. So, so I have now, one you the chemist. now you mentioned too, and you're going to talk about this too. You use um, Ilfatol also on there. Now that is one thing I do know of because coming from the photography industry, Ilfatol is Ilford. It's an Ilford uh, wetting agent that is used in processing negatives and making prints. And the whole idea, if you've ever developed film uh, or made photographic prints, the thing that is the worst thing is having water spots on your prints and on your film. And so that el eliminates that total. I mean, most of the time, if you're careful with it, like using anything sparingly. So using that, now what is the purpose of that? Like I know you use that, Patrick, in so your El mix too. So, so the, I also use Turgitol. This is Turgitol S9. So I use S7 and S9. I have S7 out in the garage. The, the weakness of Turgitol is that it is not, um, it's, um, it's not a good wetting agent. And so mixing it with the Turgitol makes it better and it lowers the, quota, the surface tension. So, so one, one thing, the chemist that I worked with is an organic chemist. This is what he, this is what we worked on this three years ago. Well, in 2019, we, we worked on this for about a year. He says, first, first you have to understand that any cleaning method will have to include at least two steps. The actual cleaning of the grooves with one or more detergents and a rinse to remove those detergents. You also have to realize that since we have to use chemical comp compounds that tend to stick to PVC to clean the record, some layer of chemicals will always remain absorbed on the surface of the groove. The trick is to keep this layer as thin as possible and with suitable properties. That that is that this is what what that is that do not generate any static or artifacts such as noise. So that's kind of like the the, the basic mission statement of, of of his cleaning process. So, but is it you know? I just don't understand why we would need to use the chemical cleaning. The whole purpose of the ultrasonic is a mechanical cleaning. It's using cavitation to create a reaction with the bubble that it creates to almost pressure wash the inner. In that sense, well, wouldn't a brush do the same thing, though? Isn't the brush a mechanical no, because process? Because the inner you know? modulation of a groove is a thousandth of a human hair. Yes. You, you can't get a brush into brush the inner that, groove yeah. of the groove like you could a burst of air. So that's kind of the theory there. So there's another yeah. person, Nate, Neil Anton, who is who is who was a engineer on naval subs, and his thing was deep cleaning of these naval subs. And he has a like a hundred page diatribe on this stuff. So so I haven't looked at the new one. And so <laughs> so I don't know where he stands on it, but it's really long and detailed if you're really into that stuff. You know, so I've read he, a couple of things. The whole surfactant thing. Yeah. I've read a couple of things. I wanted to read things that weren't pre-2018, 2016. Because as I said at the top of this uh, uh, episode, um, Library of Congress, the Smithsonian, uh, Canada, all these companies, all these archival universities and uh, resources have used um, this addition to their record cleanings and, and, and archival services. And there I was one article that, from 220, 221, even that said, 
you know, with the for best results, you, this is like in 221 or 222, you'll need to add a little uh, suffix, suffix, I can't even pronounce surfactant. it, <laughs> surfactant to the break the water surface tension. You the know, Library of Congress actually stopped pr saying anything about Terzital in 2017. I went back to the, to the Internet Archive, the Wayback Machine, and, and in two seven, tw 2017, somewhere around March, they stopped putting the cleaning process on there, and they started referencing the New England um, document and New Northeast Document Conservation Center, which to this day still has Terzital listed as their cleaning process. So, so this have, is all I've, like, this is like, you know, uh, the um the medical industry is saying okay a little alcohol and coffee is good for your heart five years later is a report bad. alcohol and a little coffee is bad for your heart then they come back they go back and forth every five years or every decade you know different papers and different um uh you know if you're well, worried i would do what mike says just use distilled water and 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 play the it thing safe is, if that's your that's your concern i've tried it with a detergent i've tried it with out of detergent. I've tried it with a surfactant, like a photo flow. The only thing I can say is I didn't notice a sonic difference between the detergent versus not having the detergent. There is some grease that accumulates from really filthy records that sometimes require a pre-clean, you know, and I'll use something that doesn't have a tergital base to it. I pre-clean with this. So... You know, you could do that, but the thing is, there's a fact the, the photo flow type agent is not necessary if you just increase the dry time. So you can eliminate all chemicals because, again, in my testing, I've never been able to determine the difference between with or without the detergent. So it's, again, why use it? And Patrick, as as the photo flow, just clean it a little, dry it a little longer. You know, on the Claudio, you have the ability to dial it between one and five. If it's a dry day in Phoenix, I can get away with drying it for three minutes. If we got a monsoon, you need to you need to up it. The water spots will accumulate. If I use a photo flow, I won't have that problem. I could do it in a minute, and it would clean the record. But I'll spend the extra time. I'll clean the record with good old fashioned air, and you know eliminate the chemicals. And I just that's the preferred way I found to do it. And I've been cleaning. And I'll say this, I don't think there's a person on this planet that's cleaned ultrasonically more records than me. I've had multiple machines running eight hours a day, six or seven days a week for eight, nine years. It just the ins and outs of them. I've been there and I did it almost a decade ago. Hey, Pat, Patrick, uh, uh, um, can you kind of respond to both of you, but Patrick especially because he uses this. Surfactants promotes cavitation at some frequencies. Does it have enough of an impact to affect sound? No one has answered that. All I can say, I mean, I I, I have the luxury of, of, of recording every pretty much everything I do before and after. And I have, I have the benefit of having people listen to these recordings and say, yeah, I hear a difference. I don't hear a difference, blah, blah, blah. Is it, have I heard a difference between something that I've, I've cleaned before and then ultrasonic with the detergents? Yeah, I have. But I mean, is it is it something that's night and day? Probably not. Um, another thing I, I didn't even talk about, like what they call quats, if you because I don't live in a, in a static environment. Uh, but there's like I, I did have a stuff called cyanostat, which is a basically an anti static agent. And there's a whole other hepostat 256. These are all things that other people use to combat static. And I'm not even going to get into that because that's really out there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've tried it. And like I said, I abandoned the mechanical process because it was, I had to go down the garage. It was a pain in the ass. It took a long time. And using the humming guru with the detergents got me to where I wanted to be. And, you know, I just found it, you know, for my purposes and the way I clean it, that, that I, I could tell the difference because it, whether it's the Liquinox I do beforehand or after, I don't know. They're the mixture that I use. I can't tell you. Well, the cleaning after the treated I cleaning. rinse. I do you rinse, rinse, yes. Yeah, you do rinse with a clear. Uh, that's that, that, that. That's a must. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, the one thing that you know, I mean, when and Michael from I don't know if you're listening yet. He might be up here. We'll see if he has a time. Uh, he said he would try to come up. Um, but his thing initially, when I got these panic emails and and comments, was that this stuff is dangerous. It's everything. Now, this is the stuff that is a mix that I was using, and you know, it's it's recommended by a lot of people. It's not. Uh, uh, Turgital Direct. I mean, uh, I think pure. it's S S three and S seven combined. I think so. That's and it's very diluted. I'm using like ten drops in a gallon jug 
So it's not a lot. And it's obviously someone mentioned, well, it can it can destroy the plastic. It could do the plastic, but it literally comes in a plastic tube. So, yeah, I don't know what well, that's about. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, there are so many chemicals used to clean records. I mean, there, there's Art de Son and like the, the disc doctor and all this stuff. None of those and the MoFi, none of those people put the chemicals they use on those things. And people blindly have been using them for decades. They never put the chemicals on there. Nobody's. But if you watch that panel, there are they do make reference to the fact that their chemicals do not contain tergitol. Yeah, I, I get don't. that. But I mean, but they don't say what it is. Correct. It could be, uh, it could be like propylene glycol for all I know. You yeah, know it could and, be something worse. And I guess we truly don't know. But, you know, what I'm cleaning records with, I'll clean, you know, I'll throw a glass in the uh, cleaner and clean records and I'll drink another glass. I don't know if I would do that with some of this other stuff. <laughs> You now know, I, I, I probably I, wouldn't I, drink, drink a glass either after cleaning. I, I think also I either. should have noted on my on my cleaning video, it was an introduction. I wasn't trying to tell everyone how they should clean records. It was my first experience never having used an ultrasonic machine myself. And I have a number of friends that have them, including the, the, um, the uh, Humming Guru and, and higher up the chain cleaners. There was and a groundswell that, that, that kind of built the last several months. I mean, for and, me, and against, I, yeah, yeah, Maslow, yeah. Maslow, Maslow, you know, and I know Michael got uh, took issue. And one thing I make a correction, Michael said that uh, the archivist on my channel said the best way to play your records is clean. I mean, clean your records, the play your record. She did say that, but she was quoting uh, the person at the LBJ library in University of Texas. It wasn't necessarily her saying that. And we talked about Ron Gant, Rod Gandry, Ron Gandry, Roy, Roy uh, Gandy. Roy Gandy uh, from Riga, uh, Riga, Riga, who says don't clean records. And of course, Michael Fremer did respond to that, saying you're you're an idiot, basically, to him, to his face about cleaning that thing about telling customers of Riga not to clean their records. So, yeah, I mean, that's the simplest thing to do a little test on with, uh, you know, any form of even water in a, in a microfiber cloth. Wiping the dust off just as a basic concept will yield marvelous results as opposed to playing a dirty record a dirty record yeah. yeah but so this is something this is for my education and i appreciate this like i don't feel uh, some people said oh michael fremer's attacking you and responding i mean michael if you're watching again you came on a little strong with your all caps but when we had the conversation now this is a in a way a continuation in which michael was here you should watch the Rachel Ghost live stream because this whole thing is on there with Michael Fremer, Michael Esposito, Patrick's on there and some other people. And we, we discuss about this. I'd say it's halfway through the three hour stream. So look forward, skip forward if you don't want to watch um, <laughs> the earlier uh, wanky, wonkier stuff. I say that all due respect, but it is something that I need to learn. And so, you know, I may try it now. I may finish that uh, that gallon jug that has 10 drops god forbid 10 drops and then uh, and do the wash and then maybe from now on try it without it and see if i, I it's hard to tell if you can tell a difference because you're cleaning different records yeah so how I do mean, you but, test but, but you, you can take one record that's very dirty clean it a couple of times with just distilled water and then try it with the mix afterwards and see if you yeah but then that would be the third cleaning so you're cleaning yeah. it more I know, so, but I mean, I mean, there's no scientific way to really do it, unless you get a, like a microscope and ultra, you know, and like actually go look at it, you know. And right I mean, right. I don't know what the humming grew, but I will tell you with the Claudio, the more you clean it, the cleaner it gets. I mean, there, there is incremental improvement. Great, granted, you get diminishing returns rather quickly on that second cycle after the first five minutes, but you can incrementally improve the record the longer you you run it through. Yeah. This is kind of like the that. medical industry and the healthcare industry. Cause I remember a couple of years ago, I had like a few skin issues on my leg, right? You know, reaction to something. And, and my doctor says, what kind of soap do you, you don't even have to soap yourself up, take a shower. You don't need soap, your natural oils in your body, mm -hmm. putting all that crap on you just adds all this crap on you. Now, some may I mean, argue when you're I in mean, a the Humming Guru has these tanks. I have a couple of tanks for this, you know, so you can, I can swap them out, you know, with, with clean water and whatever. So people are asking. So you, bought a back, you bought a backup tank. Backup tanks. Well, I have two humming gurus. I'm only using one at the moment, so I can like. Yeah. I got to tell you this on a side note, especially if you're using a humming guru and you're using even with distilled water, do not clean your record in the same exact water twice. It gets extremely nasty really, really quick, and I think that's the shortcoming with most of the machines that are out there, except for the Claudio, is their inability to properly filter water. The audio desk, it looks like from the specs I pulled up online, 
and the degritter use a form of an almost like a piece of sponge and that'll pick up larger debris but the ultrasonic cavitation takes dirt debris and blast it into particles and it you really need to be cleaning your records with a very clean water and i'm not saying go to the extent of something above and beyond distilled water but at the very least you need to be changing your water very frequently because it gets nasty really quick you should see so i've got two filters on the edge of my uh the claudio itself comes with like a five micron filter i go above and beyond that and i drop in a pump and i put a put all the water in the tank and it's constantly running through a one micron filter yeah i've seen people build those those systems and with the, with a pump and the filter it's, it's amazing the five micron filter on it how and that is on the intake line of the claudio but it's amazing how even changing the water out every couple of days, having a one micron and a five micron filter, it is amazing how dirty the water will get, even with that two levels of filtration on it. The water gets filthy really, really quick, and it'll leave a film. The dirty what frequency water does the does the Claudio do? What frequency? Is I want to say it's a two hundred watt, and I think it has four fifty watt transducers. I'd have to look at it. You when I was on their website earlier, their website was uh, it was crashing, so I wasn't okay. actually able to pull up the specs. Thank you for coming, Michael. And I, I we kind I kind of gave the gist of uh, this is a response to my video, and you came in uh, guns ablaze and telling me don't use this stuff, and we're having an honest conversation about it and how yep. things shift, like the medical industry, like sure. drink alcohol and coffee for your heart, don't drink alcohol and coffee for your heart. Over every ten years, it's different. So. Yeah. And don't eat eggs. It's 40 kilohertz, eggs. like the, the, <laughs> right. the Claudio. It's 40 kilohertz, and it is four. So, so um, you want to chime in right now first and just give your little background, how you your, your take this? Well, I just I just tuned in, so I don't know, I don't know where the – I heard something about the Claudio machine, which is fantastic. So, yeah. Well, it's, it's the thing. You know, Patrick feels that he likes to add um, something to the mix. Michael uh, and you feel nothing should be added. You talked about the dangers of this. I talked about this mix, you know, 10 drops in a gallon. Uh, some people think you need some kind of wedding agent uh, in there. Uh, I come from the background of photography. So there are certain things like um, from Ilford that's used to get spots off negatives and the sure. cleaning things. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and so. tergitol is, is great in the uh, pet petroleum industry. It's used as a surfactant in drilling rigs. But uh, from everything I've seen, even though it was recommended by some people, I just I just don't think it's necessary. It's definitely not necessary in a cavitation machine. The whole p point of a cavitation machine is to, you don't need any kind of chemical that can be dried onto the record. When you put the fan on these machines, if there's any kind of, chemical surfactant that's on the in the water it's going to dry onto the record and that's why w one of the things i will say about the um kermis machine is his he's got that that process you, you got to follow through all the way but if you do years worth of dried up crud will be removed from the record now what can cavitation do that i haven't really spent enough i'm going to do that very shortly i'm going to do a record in the Claudio machine, which I bought, and I'm going to then put it in the Kermis machine and try that and see whether I can bring up any of that white stuff. If I bring up any white stuff, you got to keep doing it until all the white stuff is gone. Otherwise, yeah, you'll you'll it'll muck up your stylus and it'll it's bad. But in the, my experience with the Kermis is the people that are getting these machines, a lot of them aren't doing the process past the white gook. Yeah. <laughs> It's a reoccurring issue. And I notice it too. If you, it, it's not fun. You get one of those records that are partially clean and it's a nightmare getting that off everything. No, I agree. I agree. So any process not properly followed is going is to create problems. So yeah, don't do it unless you're willing. And, to he does, and he doesn't list what's in his cleaner either. He says it, he says it's one thing, but it's not even the right chemical. I, the, my chemist, my chemist friend, I, I could find it there. It's not even a correct chemical. It's not even a legitimate chemical, what he lists. And I and I've actually emailed him. I have one. You know, I have a Kermis machine. Yeah. And I advocated his process. I I have a video before I went to my home and guru showing doing his process basically. Yeah. So. Well, if you could if you could send me the link to what chemical is you think is in there and what your person says about that chemical, I would appreciate okay. it. The problem okay. with this whole thing is that there's so much information 
and so much conflicting information. And that's why the most important thing is to err on the side of caution with this stuff. I wish the perfect yeah. vinyl forever guy could have come up here because I think he, he he's kind of with me on, on this whole thing about using a surfactant with the ultrasonic cleaning machine. So that guy has a retro clean, record cleaning service as his business. And, and, so, he, and he uses what he uses a super high frequency, right? He uses like a. I don't know what his frequency is. I, I, I couldn't tell you, but but I, he was just in the chat before this thing started, and I saw what yeah. he was saying, and so. Again, uh, well, see, don't be the doctor from the forties. Era on the side of caution. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. It, 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 if you're worried by by far, don't 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 risk your record. If you have but any kind of you worried, I mean, if you're cleaning rare. I mean, granted, if you're cleaning a Radiohead record that you bought today, maybe it's not that much of a concern. But if you're cleaning rare psych records, Blue Note fifteen hundred series records, I mean, shouldn't you be worried? I, I, sure. I clean the 1967 original mono UK pepper, and I'm not worried about it. And it sounds great. And I, I rinsed it. And, I could uh, I could always clean it again with, with with the latest, greatest, you know, whatever chemical people are talking about today and get get that other. Because I, I, I do rinse every I do rinse after I clean. That you, stuff. You, know, I you know, look, at th this is an education for me. And I appreciate you all coming up here. And after doing that, I know. Michael, uh, Mr. Fremer, uh, when too many Michaels on... in this, there's too many Michaels in this. Okay, Not Fremer, Fremer, Fremer came out like gangbusters on my video and emails to Dizzy here, Mr. Dizzy, and jumped on me and said, "Take that video down. You shouldn't drink a martini." Now, of course, my stuff is stick like your, st your stick. Now, again, I know, chemicals, yeah, stick, but but I, really... I, I, I get it, I get it. But I am learning here, and because I'm not all like jumping in and wrapped in to you to adding this kind of stuff everyone it seems told me to do it now i didn't ask the two michaels beforehand but everyone else everyone but you else. don't claim new records either so you're not learning enough nazi did you not watch my video on ultrasonically cleaning records Come i on, didn't keep... because i don't clean records <laughs> <laughs> records need, new records need to be cleaned too because pressing plants yeah. are dirty they're not clean yeah. they're dirty rooms records come out of the i'll out start of... with my old ones and by the time i finish my old ones my new ones will be old Put on How's a that? Blue Note 75 and clean that sucker. Well, I don't buy those. I hate those. I, did, I got rid <laughs> I of those. I got rid of those. No, this this is good. I think this is good for the audience because I'm the novice here. You know, hosting this is is really instructional for me, informational for me. And I learn. I you know, I learn from you guys. You do that. I know the music. I like Michael. Like all of you know music, and I've been into that a lot. But like like up until ten years ago, maybe fifteen tops. In my entire life, everyone in the 60s, 70s, and beyond who were in the record business, I never knew one person who cleaned records. I never w knew one person who complained about paper inner sleeves and all that kind of stuff. Now, what I know about it's the Bronco guy on TV? He was cleaning records. Yeah, you're hanging out with the wrong crowd. And But if you order that, you get a pocket fisherman, too. I'm hanging out with old guys like you, Michael. So, <laughs> so somebody asked what the what the frequency was. For the Hum and Guru, it's 40. For the Claudio, it's also 40. And I think for the Degritter, it's 125 kilohertz. How many yeah, he was, I think he was joking. What he was doing, what's the frequency, two, Kenneth? You know, two two, two for the Hum and Guru, four for the Claudio. Yeah. But, the, but the Hum and Guru only uses like 400 milliliters of water. Right. So it's in a much smaller area. To, well, to you know, there's, area. there's a new degrader machine that that just came out that has two tanks. The first tank, they include a surfactant for some reason. And then after the water drains, the other tank comes into play. And oh, you <laughs> wait a minute. Did you just say that the, the, that there is a degrader that, in, that that has a tank for a surfactant? Has two tanks. Yeah, they they, they include a, a surfactant. Okay. You want to use it? You can use it. You don't have to, but they give you Apparently, some. Apparently, D-Gritter feels that a surfactant would be beneficial. Now, are they selling the surfactant? And then, <laughs> yeah, and then, I would assume so. It's a separate tank that, that fills up with just plain water, so it rinses the record from the surfactant, and just water is there. And when you dry it, hopefully, you'll just get a dry record with water drying it and not a surfactant sealed so, itself onto the record. I, I did pull a note from 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 my chemist friend on this discussion we had. So it says, if you want to use Tergiclean, it's better not to use it alone, but with Ilfetol, as Ilfetol cures the two weaknesses of Tergiclean. It's poor wetting of the grooves and a tendency to leave residues that are difficult to remove with the usual rinse. So he's just talking about in general, not with ultrasonic, just in general using Tergiclean at all. So That's, it's best to use it with, with, no, with, with I, Ilfetol. Can I tell you something else? This is kind of peripheral, but only slightly. A guy got in touch with me who insists that record the residue in records is is 
is a carbonate, is, is like seashells. It's this white stuff that is seashells. And he said to me, it's calcium carbonate. And I heard your video where you were a Thai plastic in Thai. Uh oh, he, he ran it himself off the off the stream. I heard you say that they have calcium carbonate at that factory, and that's what's in the and that's what's in the grooves of the records when you clean it and you get this white stuff out. And I contacted the guy that makes the Neotech plastic for you know for the for these one steps and everything. He says there's no calcium carbonate in vinyl formulation. There is calcium carbonate in the factory when they make piping and tubes to you know help make it stiff. But he's even if after that, even after I connected him with the guy that is the chemist who makes the vinyl formulation, the Neotech vinyl formulation, and he insisted there's no calcium carbonate in any pellets, any place, he still insists that there is. And you can't, no matter what information you bring to people, firsthand source, you can't convince some people of things. So whatever. So there is there one no thing about, tri about, about photo flow. So people talk about photo flow, which is Triton X100. So Triton X100 is also detergent. You should not use it with Tergiclean or Ilfetol. And so so don't use photo flow with that. Okay, <laughs> based on is all, based in the on audience the audience doing this with all these chemicals, mixing all this stuff? No, I think quite based a few on, people do. Okay, based on with all three of you, I ain't going to use any chemicals from now on because I don't even <laughs> like taking meds that I take, and I just take two. But this goes back to, you know, again, 37 plus years in photography and I work with photographers and you hear all the stuff going back to Ansel Adams and Yosemite and nature photography up until the digital world was the most bullshit uh, thing for the environment with the chemicals, with split toning and selenium toning and uh, sepia toning and developing film. It's a shit show of chemicals in photography. And so yeah. I adapt that to here. So I don't want to use it all. So that's a good thing about digital now. Somewhat, somewhat. There are other issues. Everything brings on different issues, but I need to learn here. So I, I'm, I, I thank you guys for being here. No, now, I don't want to go on too long for everyone. You clean your records, a lot of records, with the KL Audio Machine with no chemicals, and it does an amazing job, right? Yeah, here, and I'll actually show you. I was showing them ahead of time. So my, okay, we're my, going into location shoot here. On location me, um, shooting. Do not use a magic eraser on your stylus. Yes, do not. Do not. I've got five of these things. This is the filtration system that I've nice. kind of designed. One micron filters in conjunction with their inline filters. Right. Uh, you just don't need any type of cleaning agent. You just don't. Distill do you make water. meth? Do you make meth too? No, this is actually a, it's a process. It's involved. Look how filthy this one micron filter is. Well, I just somewhat cleaned it. You probably can't see it. The amount of dirt that comes off of these records with this process is truly amazing. The one micron filters, how well, you should subscribe get. to the Madam Sin method of cleaning and just don't buy dirty records. And on a well, side note, for eight dollars a piece at the ingroup.com, I will clean your new records for you. So, okay, we'll, we'll put a link below to every we're going to put a link to load to the ingroove. <laughs> Uh, to the tracking angle and so to, we have uh, an affiliate link for that. So if we refer anybody, we get a discount. So, by the way, room treatment is overrated. I don't know why you have room treatment behind you. It's overrated. No, I'm, uh, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. About How about TVs between your speakers? How's that? What is that align? So no. TV? Hey, everybody <laughs> hates me. Mike uh, Esposito says I got puny speakers. I have shitty room treatments. I, I just dainty. want to play records. Dainty I like to speaker. listen to music. Dainty, dainty. You know. You have that Thank drum you. set in the middle of your room too. Thank well, that's down, that's downstairs. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Well, any okay? Any last minute closing things here? I don't want to go on too long with this. Two hundred forty-four yeah. people watching, so thank you. Uh, we will link to everyone, and I do want to thank Michael. Even at first, I was a little like I was on the live stream this morning when your emails came in: bomb, 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 boom, bomb, bim. And, and um, I was I had third. To, and to get attention, I had to yell. So that, that's where the oh, question Exactly. And, I, you know, of course, I don't mind it. You and I have a, a, a shtick thing, and I, I, I have no problem with it. I think your Dizzy video, as, as interesting as a great concept, I think it was concept A plus execution C. I think it went too long. It fell flat. Because your audience, most of your audience has no idea who we are. So. Some, some some, some did. Some did. Oh, some did. I can believe me. I got notified by a lot of people. I think the Mazzy hat was the mistake. With the video. Why was 
when you made fun of me either. They didn't know who I was. And I'm I, oh no, because I said it was I said it was Michael Fremer. Here's your new channel link, and because people didn't know you moved then, you moved to a new thing, and it was yeah. a re- yeah yeah. Anyway, I know you got back at me seven months later. That's okay. It's Fair enough. Poked a little I, fun. I have the I have the flux high fi for cleaning the stylus, Tim P, and it does work well. So I would agree with that. But I not not was, the magic eraser. I think uh, the hat was kind of what threw people off because I truly don't feel he was making a commentary about you as much as he was making a commentary about other people in the VC. Well, no, I, I think I, you, you can answer this off. if you want. I think it was a reflection on everyone who shows record, and I was just the face to represent everyone. Yeah, but that's kind of what was lost, I would imagine. Yeah, because yeah. I actually talk about the records. I talk about the music and the history like you do. Yeah, I don't that, just sit there a- like... Satire is to say the is to take it to an extreme where you just hold up records. So that's oh, that, absolutely, that's... absolutely, absolutely, and that's what my uh, cleaning video was. Mm-hmm. We're sitting there. There's a guy walking off the street. I don't know if you watched the whole video. We grabbed a guy off the street who happened to be walking by my house carrying records, and we cleaned his records. If you watched to the end, I mean, it's all shtick. Yeah. Okay, but you, you just got to be careful about shtick and combination of a, what is a really serious subject I well think. i understand that but but the, the whole thing about this is going to like melt your eyeballs is kind of overkill i think this you know this type of thing right no you didn't say that. that i'm just me i'm i'm paraphrasing well it might if you use it as eye drops i'm well, not sure yeah, okay exactly <laughs> that i don't exactly. know I actually don't gave it. you the can't buy throw results last night if you're at david's stream but yeah don't hit um, it any last minute thoughts on this? Because I don't want this to go on too long. But um, and every, and I I think Michael's got to get his cameras up. So you know the thing is, Michael, you're going to put cameras out at your house so people don't steal your records. But I have a camera outside my house. They'll I still do. steal your records. You just know who they are, and and the police won't do anything. So it doesn't really matter. Bingo. It's still. A, I just want to say that new records. When you open a new record that's in shrink wrap, it's dirty. Yeah. And you should. That's, I just think everybody I, should, uh, hopefully everybody cleans their records. Whatever method you use, please clean your records. They'll sound better. You'll enjoy them more. And, you know, that, that way, you know, you don't sit there and go, oh, I got clicks and pops. Just clean your records. You know, do yes, a little I, research. Find out for yourself. I'm not a chemist. I don't know this shit. I just did my own research. Do your own research. Come up with what you want to do. But clean your records. I do want to answer Greg's question there. He asked if that dirty water filter was from New Vinyl. Yes, it was. New vinyl is absolutely disgustingly filthy. Sometimes yeah. worse off than a used record, a properly well-maintained used record would be. Yes. Pressing plants are dirty r- rooms. They're not clean rooms. And so you clean a record before you play a new record. And your stylus will last longer. It will. Because the dirt in the grid is like sandpaper. And it why, do you think, why do you think the Riga guy says that? And it can't just be for selling turntables. He's selling turntables to anybody anyway. For selling no. stylus, styluses, I know, but you know, Roy, Roy Gandy is is uh, is a very smart man, but he's got some ideas that I, he he also thinks the stylus rake angle doesn't matter, azimuth doesn't matter, it all matters a lot, and uh, he just wants to make it easy for people. That's part of what his his thing is. Let's make it easy. Don't don't make it confusing. Don't make it a chore. Just buy a record, play it. The stylus will clean it. Don't worry about your asthma. Just get your tracking force correct. Everything else is irrelevant. But boy, everything is relevant. So yeah. Okay. I find that well, philosophy though to be somewhat flawed because most people that are buying records these days didn't really know what a record was five years ago. The amount of people that are in this hobby that are brand new is extreme. Yeah. You get a brand new record, it's filthy, it doesn't play well. And that turns a lot of people off. You really got to encourage people to play the records. You, you want them to feel satisfied in that $30 to $40 purchase they made. And the way to do that is a decent system, doesn't have to be crazy, a decent system, a maintained turntable, and a clean record. That's when you have that epiphany, aha moment, like, wow, I get this. This is awesome. I enjoy records. You play dirty records on crummy equipment, and you think to yourself, why the hell did I just spend $40 on this? My iPhone sounds better. You, so it's a disservice to the new people to not have them kind of following those procedures because they will be in and out of this hobby very quickly, and I see it. It's yeah, not what your about- you're where the road is the road and you have to get those people and show them what to do and you have to make it it's not a chore it's not terrible it's a quick thing that you do it's like you get up in the morning you take a shower do you not take a shower because it's you know, maybe that day you don't want to take a shower you take a shower anyway you just do the work clean it done 
You know, there is a bit of the, and again, Michael, uh, excuse me, Fremer has been to this um, a few years longer than me, but not a whole lot longer than me. But I haven't been in the technical side of it as, like anywhere near and still not like Michael. I've been on the record side of it, the music side of it since, you know, the 60s too. Um, and that's never been an issue. So all of a sudden, you know, as you know, certain things, it's hard to change and come around and doing things. And I've joy, I've I've enjoyed my collection for so long. It is a little hard to all of a sudden say now, you know, everything I heard, I, I, I didn't hear enough in those records and that version of Pepper or that version of but it's you know, true. Hotel California. So but it's true. there is a reality there that, you know, I, I just want to put on a friggin' record. I don't want to compare to six different pressings of UHQR or MoFi's or another Kevin Gray cut. Now there are bad pressings uh, you know originals but don't you want to but, but don't you want to take that pepper that you just cleaned and go wow this sounds and I did. freaking amazing and I did. <laughs> you know <laughs> and i and that was my friend coleman my late friend coleman had that from you know and i didn't know he had that particular one and when i listened to it i like i'm a stereo fan of pepper i i don't know my first copy the day it came out i got picked a stereo even for a dollar more i love stereo it's it's i like that kind of psychedelic thing i know it's what not what beatles and george martin and and Emmerich intended, but when I listen, and I, I get mono, and believe me, I listened to Coleman's, and I finally got it better. Listen to that original UK, um, but it was noisy as hell. And then cleaning it the other day, this past weekend, oh my god, it was almost like a new record. But it's not just getting rid of the clicks and pops; it literally will sound better. There, I, no, I, it I went, mean, in fact, it, there's it, still it, a, there's a fuller. And, there, there's like a fuller sense. I can't even yeah. explain it. You know, it, it, it's it's yeah. just different. You know, I think it's just I the agree. result of the needle riding the groove yeah. closer. I agree. I agree. I, I, I'm a hey, mea culpa. I agree. I'm learning. I've learned. I might Good. convert. I might convert to Christianity now because of you two guys. <laughs> I'm not doing that, and you're not doing it either. Okay, I'm going to end this because yes. we can go. Face laser handy. So watch what you say. Say that again. You got cut off. I keep my Jewish space laser handy, so watch what you say. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> and your child pizza labor uh, porno things in the pizza shop with Hillary Clinton. All right, um, <laughs> that's my political stance of the day. I'm Thank sticking you. with it. Thank you, uh, Michael Esposito, the in-groove links below. Uh, Michael Fremer from the tracking angle. You, you'll, it, he'll be the best hangover uh, tone arm of in the business. And uh, Michael, uh, excuse me, Michael, uh, too many Michaels, and Patrick, the Vinyl Destroyer here. Links below to everyone. So if you don't, subscribe to everyone here. So thanks again, and I really appreciate uh, Bye -bye. everybody. Thanks, Mazzy. See you guys.